Hi, my name is Chris and today I want to talk to you about how you can record multiple cameras in OBS and then edit that in Premiere Pro with a multi-camera sequence quite easily and make use of all kinds of different things along the way that I was using basically to have a bit of an easier workflow and have the flexibility to actually make edits after the fact. That of course being the idea because if you just use OBS to record something and you, for example, have a main scene which looks like this and you have yourself inside of a camera like this on the screen, then that is going to be baked in onto the recording and you might not want that or maybe you are hiding something behind the camera right there and you want to have, have that show up. In this case, for example, these statistics right there and you might want to have the camera at the top of the screen but you don't necessarily want to worry about those things while you are doing the recording and that's the basic purpose of this video. I want to show you a way how you can actually record a screen recording, multiple cameras if you have them, or those kind of things all into one huge file to then be able to edit all of that in a multi-cam sequence inside of Premiere Pro. So let's jump right into it and start with the basic setup to be able to record all of those different cameras. And for that, what we are essentially want to do is first of all, I want to just create a duplicated sequence of this. Let's just call it main scene two. And with that, we can just start in the settings. So going into the settings right there to video and with the base canvas, as well as the output canvas, we want to adjust this to basically adjust for all of the different cameras that we want to be recording. So in my case, let's say I want to do three cameras. I have my FaceTime camera, I have my screen, and also the basic setup here with the ATM Mini going into the computer as well. So we have the base canvas, which is 1920 by 1080. Now we want this three times. So we want to take the 1920 in this case or the 1080, depending on how you want to do this. I want to do the 1920 and let's just do this three times. So it's 5760. And now copy the full base canvas and put this into the output scaled canvas as well. Apply and OK. And now, as you can see, we have a huge video canvas, which is essentially three times full HD. And now we can take, for example, this camera, stretch it up all the way so that it actually fits the full screen. And now we can actually also add the ATM mini camera. So let's just um, copy and we want to paste this as, oh, I want to have it as a duplicate. So I have to create a new one, video capture source. And this is ATM mini. So don't get confused by the naming. The other one is not correctly named. I don't want to use the preset on this one because you might know that the ATM Mini actually has a bit of a color problem right there. We want to set this to full color range so that it looks correct. And while we are doing that, maybe I want to check this because this is not, this is auto. So we are back to normal. Now we have this screen here, which is the ATM Mini and I can actually put this right there. And with that now, you can see we have three screens or three cameras essentially recording at full HD all into one video file. Now to go back into the settings before we do that, I wanna also show you what I have set up there. In the output and then go to recording, I have set it to advanced and on Mac OS, I 100% recommend using the encoder Apple VT H.264 hardware if you have that available. If you have something better and you know that, then that's fine. If you have a super beefy CPU, you might get away with the X264 encoder. However, I have found that this here does not tax my computer system as much and by doing so, it is much more enjoyable to still use other programs whilst doing recordings and the fans are also not kicking in as much. However, I have read that the quality is not as perfect as using the, H uh, the X264 one right there. But as I mentioned, good enough for what I have been doing. I also have set the bitrate to pretty much the highest setting possible and I think I cannot change it anymore. So I can lower it by doing the 
arrow keys down, but I cannot get higher. So this is probably the maximum. However, the Apple hardware encoder does the encoding based on the information that it gets. So it's a variable bitrate encoder. And so that doesn't really bother that system as much anyways. So those are my recording settings. We are going to be recording into this folder right there and into the MKV file format, because if you choose something else, you always get this warning that, for example, if your program crashes or anything like that, the recording is actually not going to be able to be recovered. If you use MKV, you can just record everything that you already finished recording, and then you can just move on from there, but you have to remux the files. So we can apply this hit OK, and then we can just start recording. And now I actually just found out that when I start the recording with this setup, with the Apple hardware encoder, then this message pops up. However, the fix for that is using a different canvas size because apparently the Apple hardware encoder maxes out at 4K in width. So for the purpose of doing this type of recording, what we wanna do here, and still include up to three or even four cameras, we will have to use the settings for 4K. So essentially doing the 1920 by 1080, or rather 1920 times two. So we have that X and then 1080 times two, and then the 2000, and just copy that over for the output scale as well. Apply. And now of course we have these two cameras next to each other. And our third one, we have to move down here but now we can actually hit the start recording button. So again, Apple hardware encoder does not like to do things that are wider than 4K and wider those than those 3,800 and something. However, with the X264, it actually worked. And with the NVAC on Windows, it might also work. But starting the recording now and moving this out of the way, we can talk about Premiere Pro as that is launching up and we are doing our test recording right here. This test of recording right now is not using any audio. So that is also something you might wanna look into with other videos or leave a comment down below and I will take a look at that and also maybe make a video about OBS and audio in the future. Now we can create a new project and with a secondary screen setup, it's all opening up on the other screen and let's put this onto the desktop as an untitled project, just simply as that. And we have this opening up that project. And now we have this new project open and we'll use that for the demo of that recording. Because what we essentially want is a way of actually using those different things, like the different cameras at different times and even doing something like a picture in picture style, which is easy to edit and also fast to edit. So for that purpose, I have found a way to use the multi-camera sequence specifically in combination with this type of situation where we have multiple cameras recorded into one huge file. But now before we jump over there or before we can go into the details of that, we of course first have to stop our recording here inside of OBS with the stop recording button. Now we are done with OBS at this point the recording is done and we can do the remuxing. So go into the file menu up there and then remux recordings. Now we can choose the button right there, which will ask us for which recording we want to remux. And it opens up to the folder where we do our recordings in. That of course is the last one and remux and that is done which is also one of the reasons why I think that the remuxing is actually not that big of a deal because it is super fast. It's just a matter of just changing the file type in some way, but it really doesn't take long at all. So it's not a transcoding, it's just a remuxing. So that is really easy. But now we can essentially close off OBS already. We are completely done there. And we have to now get the recordings from the recordings folder. So we have the MP4 right there, which is the remuxed file, and the MKV file right there, which is the uh, Matroshka video file, which is the one that supposedly protects against crashes. We can take the MP4 into Premiere Pro, which by the way, is not possible with the MK4, uh, MKV. So if I take that into Premiere Pro, you'll notice that it will not import that file because for some reason they have removed support for MKV files. Now, what we can do now 
is start a new sequence. And we don't want to just drag this over because, of course, we don't want a 4K sequence, essentially. We want a 1080p sequence, however, with those different cameras. So starting a new sequence, let's take the DSLR 1080p and we want to do that. And then we have this file right there. We want to keep the existing settings for this so that we have this. Now, as you can see, we have a tiny bit of all of the cameras in the center. Now, what we can do to get all of them here is, of course, go to a scale of 50%. So now we have all of them visible. However, that, of course, is not really what we want. What we want is something different on all of them in multiple layers. So to do that, we want to go to 100%. Let's see if we can get this. So we want to go to 100% because we want all of the cameras individually at 100%. And let's see, why is this not loaded? Okay, so there we are. Now it's loaded. And now we have to reposition this whole situation here so that we have just one camera at the center. So we move this over and this is so at 1920. And this here, is it at zero? Yes. So with zero, I think we have the bottom left camera. With 1080, we have the screen recording, which is done inside of OBS. And then if we have uh, the 1920 here, then we have the next one over here with the double of that. So let's copy this over because now we have the first screen or the first camera in our multi-cam sequence, essentially. We can now hold down the Alt or Option key on your Mac OS keyboard. Then we have this duplicated. Choose this track right there. And now to get the second camera in view, we want to just put a zero right there. So now we have the FaceTime camera on screen. Now to get the bottom camera, we duplicate this again. So this is now the third angle essentially. And now we want to select the topmost track. And here we want to go and enter 1920 and zero. And now we have the third camera angle. So as you can see, we have the main camera, which was the bottom left one in the recording. Then if I want to make this invisible, we have the FaceTime camera with the top right hand side. And we have the screen recording with OBS as well as an individual track all on this one timeline. Now, something I want to also include here is, of course, a picture-in-picture -picture version of all of this. So to do that, we want to choose which camera should be the picture-in-picture -picture camera. I would like to have the main camera right here as the picture-in-picture. -picture. And so I'm going to duplicate that again. And I also want the track which has the screen recording. So I'm going to put this on top as well. Now I'm going to move this over because I have to resort these. So right now I have the main camera at the top there. Then we have the picture or the display recording right there. And let's just put this underneath. And as this updates, we should be seeing the main camera. Now I want to have the main camera at a different size. So let's say this should be at 10%. And you can see this is tiny at the top here. However, now as we move this onto the screen, we have, of course, all of the cameras again. Now, there are different solutions for this. For example, you can use a crop to make these disappear. So that would be one of the main solutions that I think is a sensible one right here. So we use the crop like so. The other solution would be to actually finish up this master sequence as a multi-camera sequence and then import it again and use that as another source inside of itself, essentially. However, that might open up a whole bunch of problems later on. So let's just use the crop on this one. So we want to go down and we want to have the settings for the crop right there. In this case, we want to have a crop from the right hand side at 50% and a crop from the top at 50%. And maybe we want to just have the size not as small and also the position. We want to have this, let's say, at the bottom right side. 
So now it is positioned. However, to be able to use this setup in a multi-cam sequence, we have to make these two top layers, which we just created, which is the screen recording and the camera recording, and make those actually work as one sequence by right-clicking when they both are selected with shift, I did that, so shift-click and then shift-click onto the other, right-click or control-click, and then we want to just nest these two sequences together. And now we have this main view which has both of them. So we have the display and the picture-in-picture. -picture. Now if we disable this and make the next one visible, we have the main camera, we have the FaceTime camera with a beautiful face expression, and then we have the screen recording in a clean format. So now we have all of these four tracks in this sequence, and now we can actually use that sequence, which is now the main multi-cam, and include that into a different work. So we again create a new sequence, which is probably going to have the same settings, and this is the main sequence. And now we can include the main multicam right here. This of course shows the main image, so the topmost layer, but now we can right click onto this sequence and go down into this menu and there's a point which is called multi-camera on the sequence and when we enable this, then this sequence here acts as a multi-camera sequence and each individual track is interpreted as a individual camera. So now we can enable the multi-camera mode, which is the one right there. So we can toggle this mode right there, which has this big screen and the smaller screens. If you don't have that, you can go onto the plus icon right there and then you can drag it in. So this icon right there, drag it right into this line and you have the multi-cam toggle button available. And if we activate that, you can see we actually have all of those different angles visible. Now, the reason why there are more empty slots than necessary, the whole bottom row here is not really necessary in my opinion, is probably because we have empty tracks on the other things. So we can go back into the main multi-cam sequence. In this left part right here, we wanna just do a right click or a control click and then we go to either delete track on the empty ones, or we can also go into delete tracks. And there we can say we want to delete all the empty audio and video tracks. So now it's all cleaned up. And if I go back into the main sequence, you can see we basically just have all of those four sources that we want available. And now what you can do is you can actually go on from the beginning and let's say Right at the beginning here, you want to start with the main camera being the FaceTime camera. So you would go in and depending on your keyboard shortcuts, however you have those set up, I have it to be this cut camera one, and that is just the number. However, if you have the default set up from Premiere Pro, so let's see how that is set up you have that also at one, two, three, four, just clicking the numbers at the top right there. And I'm gonna just move back to my personal preset. And now I want to choose camera two at this point. And you can see my computer is a bit struggling with this. However, now if we play this back, you actually see all of the things happening at the same time. All of these different sequences are updating and showing you what is visible. So for example, if now I wanna do a cut and at this point in time, I wanna actually show the bottom left camera. So this is camera number three with the picture in picture and the main screen. I can actually just hit the number three when I am at that point, continue playback. And as my computer updates this, as I've mentioned with H.264 files on this MacBook, it's not necessarily the smoothest experience that I have had. If, for example, you have a Mac Mini, the M1 especially, that should not be a problem at all. Now, if I scrub through a little further to demonstrate this more, may I want to go and choose the fourth camera at some point? Yes, that probably would make sense if, for example, we go, or let's say I wanna have a clean signal, like the top left image, so I wanna just change to camera one in that instance by just hitting the one key on my keyboard. And so if I now go forward, 
there's a moment where I would have just the main camera on the bottom right hand side, but it also includes the screen recording and the bottom left hand side, of course, is just the main camera whenever I switched to that in that sequence as I recorded it. So now I can switch to camera three and that is of course ready and going strong. And lastly, if I go back to the ending right there, then we should be able to have a nice looking camera four and we have this image available. Now this concludes all of the things that I was mentioning in the beginning of the video. You have a big recording of all of these four cameras in a 4K file and now you can edit them in a multi-camera sequence inside of Premiere Pro easily with shortcuts to simply switch between these cameras. You can of course also do all of the other things that are available with multi-camera sequences like for example if you want to change a cut you can also do a right click there multi-camera and then choose which camera you want active for that duration if you want to change that after the fact. All of those things are possible with this way of working and you have the flexibility to actually have the picture in picture that you would like to have without compromising the record quality of times where you want to adjust, move the picture in picture to another place instead of the one where you had it during the recording and if you want to even change things like the borders and stuff like that inside of Premiere Pro as you would do normally. This also with the multi-camera sequence is something that works in other scenarios as well. So for example, if you just have a screen recording on a separate file, so that's just a screen recording in one file and you have a video file, for example, recorded directly inside of your camera or multiple cameras, you can of course also use a multi-cam sequence and with that nested sequence, make things like a screen recording with a picture in picture, which you can dynamically switch to. And that makes the whole editing experience a whole lot easier than to have, for example, enable picture in picture, enable the screen recording, disable both of those, and then of course also have all others visible again. So with all that said, I think this is a wrap for this video. If you have questions around this process, you can leave those in the comment section down below or of course contact me on my Discord server which will be linked in the description below as well. And with all that said, I hope you have an amazing day. I hope this was somewhat well explained. If it was, I would appreciate a thumbs up and see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.